Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are going to talk about how to spool a fishing reel the correct way. We're actually going to talk about both types of reels today, a bait caster and a spinning reel. We're going to break down everything you need to know. There's two different ways you need to spool those to make sure you're doing it properly. And the number one thing we're not going to do today is this. We're not going to have someone hold the spool on the other side with a pencil doing it that way. We're gonna show you how you can do this entirely by yourself. You will never need someone ever to do this again with you. You can spool your reels whenever you need to. You will not get any tangles. It will make it a lot easier. If you ever get wind knots when you're out there fishing with a spinning reel, I'm gonna show you how to fix that today. And bait casters, a little bit easier, but we'll show you a few tricks with that as well. So stay tuned and let's get right into it. We're getting rid of this guy today. So we're gonna start with the spinning reel first. We had to step out in the garage here to be able to film this just so we had a little bit more room to actually show you how I spool this stuff up. Uh, you will need a little bit of room to do this. Usually I do it in my boat, but my boat's actually at the shop right now. We'll be getting it back hopefully in the next week or so and then be able to actually get out on the water and fish. That's why we're spooling up all our reels ready to get going and fishing. So spinning reel we're gonna do first. I do have it on a spinning rod and what you want to do is run the line through the guides the entire way from the tip all the way down a lot of people they want to just run it through this first guide right here the biggest trick is going to come from running it through the entire guides and then onto your reel um, i do have just a little bit of monofilament on here i used as a backing i'm going to be putting braid on here so i attached the line to my spool with an arbor knot um, you can use your favorite knot. You literally could just do two overhand knots. It really doesn't matter. Just get it attached to your spool somehow. If you're going to do straight mono or fluorocarbon, run it through your guides and then just attach it to your spool and you're done. We're going to be doing some braid. So we're going to run a backing and then tie a, what I would use as my leader knot. I use an Alberto knot. I'll tie braid to my fluorocarbon or mono at the end here. Uh, and then reel over the top so it doesn't spin on the spool. So we're gonna show you that in just a second. The first thing you need to know when you're spooling up your spinning reel um, is you want to focus on which way your spinning reel turns. So instead of just having, one, you're not gonna use pencils, two, it's not just gonna run all over the floor when you're reeling it up. You don't need to put it in a bag or have a spool holder or anything like that. We'll show you here in just a second. But when I turn this reel, I can see that the reel spins this way. So when I take my spool, I want my line to come off. It's gonna lay on the ground flat. I want my line to come off this way, the same way that your spool spins. So when that line comes off the spool, it should come off the same way. So if I take this line that I'm about to spool up, I can see it's coming off the same way. So this spool is labeled down when I put it down. Other spools, it might be label up. You just have to check when you do it. This one's gonna be labeled down. So we're gonna set this label down on the ground here, and then we'll be ready to spool it up uh, once we tie our leader knot. Okay, so now we're gonna tie our Alberto knot here, and then we're gonna get to spooling this up. So all we're gonna do when we start our Alberto knot we're just gonna make a little loop in our line here. If you'd like to see a more detailed video on how to do this, I can do it in another video. Go ahead and drop a comment, but we're just gonna do a quick one here. I don't actually even do the full turns. I bring it up through the bottom of the knot there. I'll wrap it literally three times down. I try to do less wraps on this because you're never gonna see this knot. I just want it so that the line is some, has something to hold to when I reel it onto the spool. But if you do three wraps, it, you, it'll never catch in your spool because you don't have a giant knot in there. So I go three down, three back, drop it down, and then I'll go ahead and just pull that tight. And then I have my lines connected. So my braid is now ready to go and reel up onto this spool. We'll take our scissors right here and we'll trim this pretty close because we don't want it catching on our line in the spool. You should never get close enough that you actually have the knot sticking out in your spool, but just so that and if it doesn't lay perfect or anything like that, trim the knot really, really close. And now we're ready to go. So it was that easy just to get this thing set up and ready to spool. Now here's the easy part. As long as you do this one trick, this will not spin all over the floor and you'll have a perfectly wrapped spool line when you're done. Once we figured out which way our reel goes and the line goes, you should be good. But to test it, I will reel onto my spool a little bit, 
it does not matter where you have your line in front of you. I have it basically directly below my tip right here. So directly below the tip there is all you really need. Um, it doesn't matter if it's closer to you, further away. It it, overall, it doesn't matter. I try to keep it to below the tip though, because once you start reeling this on, I'll pinch the line with my fingers right here, and I will start slowly winding it on and giving it a little bit of tension. So I'll start winding it onto my reel and it'll come off the spool pretty easily because it'll just be un unraveling on its way up. So I'll wind it on, give it 10 or 20 wraps like this, and then to check it, you can gently set your line down and give it slack. So if I look at my tip when I set the line down like this, if that does not, when you give it slack, if it does not wrap around your tip like we have right here, you can see that this is just coming right out of the tip of my rod with slack and it doesn't wrap around. It's just hanging there. That is good. You can keep winding it. I'll still drop some slack in the tip every once in a while to check it and see what happens. What you don't want to have happen is this line wrap around your rod tip like this. If you drop some slack in it and it wraps around your rod tip like that, it's just gonna be wrapping onto the spool as well. So you're basically just putting twists in your line as you're putting it on, and eventually you'll get a bunch of line twists when you go and actually fish for the day. If that does happen and you are reeling it up and it wraps over itself, what you wanna do, you'll go right down to your spool here where we laid it face up, and you will just flip the spool over, and that's it. Once you flip that spool over, give it 10 or 20 more cranks on the rod, and then give it some slack again. And if it doesn't wrap over it again, leave it there, you'll be fine. If it does wrap again, just flip the spool again. And you can flip the spool as many times as you need to to get it to wrap on there nice. Theoretically, you should only have to flip it once or zero times. If you get it correct the first time, it shouldn't wrap back on itself. If you don't get it correct or for some reason it's wrapping, you should only have to flip it once. It'll automatically undo it and you'll be able to wrap the rest of the way. So we've put about 20 cranks on here. We're going to go ahead and finish spooling it up and we'll show you where you want to stop and trim it so that you don't have an overflowed reel. So we wound up our line here and we have a perfectly filled spool. Someone's going to say this isn't perfectly filled, but I like to underfill my reels just a little bit. It helps make it easier managing on the line. Uh, so you can see right here, uh, there's the bevel in the spool at the top here, this like actual slanted line that you never want to end up on. If you actually spool up onto that, your line's just going to fly off your reel and it's never going to manage properly. Once you get past that little angle, you can see there's a flat spot at the top here of my spool. And I stopped about a 16th to an eighth of an inch short there. It's never going to wrap perfectly when you do it yourself, but when you actually go fish this uh, line, it'll start to settle in and kind of shrink back down a little bit. So you can come pretty close to the end of that flat spot, but you want to leave just a little bit of a gap. And then on the bottom, you'll see there's also the flat spot. You want to leave a little bit of a gap there. So that's all spooled up as perfectly as we need it. You can see on the rod tip here, still slack and there's nothing wrapping around the tip. So this reel is 100% ready to go. It's not gonna get all tangled out there while you're fishing. Take my cutters, I'll go ahead and cut my line, and I can go ahead and tie on a leader or my favorite bait and go fishing. And it's that easy. I didn't have to have someone hold the spool for me, and I'm ready to fish with my spinning rod. Um, like I said, spinning rod's a little bit more tricky than a bait caster, um, but we'll do the bait caster next and we'll show you how easy that can be. All right, so we're gonna do a bait caster next. Same thing, you're gonna put it on your rod and you are going to run the line down all the guides. So we're gonna do that in just a second. The key to doing a bait caster, you can use all different kinds of things. I've used like the Sterilite soft plastic shoe box things before. Um, you want some type of bag. So Berkeley makes this one here, it's like a line bag. If you use regular size spools, um, you could use a line bag like this and you'll see when I open this up, inside my line bag, I'll have all my spools laid next to each other like that and that will keep tension for you. So if you use regular size spools, you could get a line bag like this uh, and be able to spool out of that. You want something to hold tension within that bag. You don't just want a loose spool in there. Um, now, nowadays, I'm using the thousand yard spools. I buy fluorocarbon like a thousand yards at a time, and I'll use like an actual tackle bag like this I have down here on the ground. So in here, I will also keep my thousand yard spools 
and this will allow me to keep tension on it. So you can see I have three vertical ones. Those are the ones I'm not using right now. I will use them on other reels, but this is the spool that I'm actually going to spool my line off of. So the trick here with your bait caster, I'm gonna set this back down on the ground so I can do it. When you get your spool, no matter what kind of spool you're using, you want the line to come off the top of the spool. So you need your spool to sit vertical and it has to come off the top. So for this, I'm using those spools as tension to hold that spool in place so that it spins like this rather than dart all around and flip all over the place. So I'm gonna set this back down in there like I had it with the line coming off the top and then I'm gonna face that bag to me. And then I will take the line, we'll go ahead and run it down the guides and we'll tie our line on again, just like we did with the spinning reel. I'm gonna use an Arbor knot. You could do two overhands, it really doesn't matter. We're gonna go ahead and get that set up and we'll show you how easy it is to spool this up. All right, so now that we have the line through the guides, we have it tied onto our reel. Now the spooling begins and it's very similar to what we just did with our spinning reel, except you don't need to check your line. You can if you want, uh, but you don't really need to check your line as long as you have it coming off the top of the spool and you want a little bit of tension on it. So you can see that that spool is holding it a little bit tight and on my rod tip, I have a little bit of tension just being applied like that. Then I'll pinch it with my fingers again and then we'll just go ahead and wind it on there. And the big key here, also make sure your drag is cranked all the way down because that's gonna hold tension on your spool as well. So you want this as tight as you can get it and we'll just go ahead and start winding it on there and the, the actual worm gear of your reel will level wind it for you. You can use your fingers to guide it a little bit to get it into place and then I'll just go ahead and wind away. So we'll go ahead and wind this up just like we did with the spinning reel and we'll show you when to stop so you have a perfectly filled reel. And then just like that, we go ahead and we're ready to cut this again. You can see this blue spool right here. Again, it's gonna have a little bevel and then it's gonna have a flat spot and underfill is always better than overfill. So we're gonna underfill it just a little bit below that bevel so that you can actually control your line, manage it on the reel and it'll be good to go. So all we'll do is again, I can pull out just a little bit of slack here and I'll take my cutters and I can just go ahead and snip this off and I'm ready to tie my favorite bait on and go fishing. So we got quite a few more reels to spool up. We have the new reels in, the rods are gonna be coming this week and the boat should be coming this week as well and we'll be ready to fish in the very near future. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check this one out right here. It will talk about what line you should be putting on your reels and how to choose the correct one. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up. Thanks for watching.